excuse me for the for the delay. There was technical problems over here with my computer, but here we're starting. So, with God, with God's help, we have learned most of the topics in this week's Torah portion and the commandments of the Mitzor and how to, how to purify. And then we learned yesterday, we learned the Haftorah about the four lepers that came and saved the whole, the Jewish people, at least the, where there was the famine, Israel. So now let's continue learning the Sicha that we learned today in the morning, which is the Rebbe is speaking about what should be our attitude in the night of the Seder and also certain details about the, the Seder night, at least the way that Chabad does it. So we said, first of all, we start off with dipping, dipping because it's a custom. Customs are very important. So that's what he said, when, when we teach children a way to teach them that the customs of the Jews are also a minog, a custom, we're talking about customs serving God. As Madar Zechoyevzen, Moser never said that even on the customs that we should be uh, willing to, uh, uh, to give up our comfort, our will, to uh, money, just for the sake of a, of, a, of, a, of, a, of a custom, a Jewish custom, as Demol Zuckman, then we can say, Avadim Hayinu Baparo, then we used to be servants to Paro in Egypt, but God took us out of there, with a strong hand, with an outstretched arm. So it is also now, like it says, in the days of going out of Egypt, like we're learning about, in the mind of the morning, that God willing, we'll learn also tomorrow morning, Friday morning, the days of our going out of Egypt that we're now preparing for the future redemption by means of Mashiach is nit kukin doig oif dem choshech and to ignore, despite the darkness, which is doubled and redoubled in exile, and Yotzienu, God will take us out, to a tremendous light. But if you look at the world now, you can't see really any indication. I mean, maybe you could try to imagine something that things are somehow they're getting better or closer to the future redemption, that people are more interested in God than they were before. Things seem to be getting darker and darker all the time. But nevertheless, the fact is, is that now we're in a doubled, redoubled darkness if we teach the children properly. That you're not supposed to pay attention to all these negative things is on no to the Chadash that will let will sing to God a new song. No Shir Chadash, not a feminine song in the feminine, but also a Shir Chadash, Zachar. What does it mean? Powerful. A powerful new song. If that's a Geula Shlem, it'll be a complete, total redemption that won't be afterward exiled, not like when we left Egypt or after we left Babylon, etc. By means of Mashiach Sikhin Bimi Rabbi Amir. Okay, that was the end of the speech we gave in the morning, the importance of customs. And that's why we start off the four questions, at least in the Chabad. There's other places that also do, according to the, the Kabbalistic sources, etc. They start off with dipping. Why do we dip first? Okay, let's let's go back even in fact one. Let's see. It's, he brings down the sources over here. He brings the sources. Can you see this? I hope so. Once here we go. Oh. So we start off. He says, "There's also a Mishnah in Yerushalmi." He brings down. There are other pieces. There's others that start off. Also, the Rif and the Rosh. Rif is Rabbi Alfasi, and the Rosh is Rabbi Asher. And there's other places also in the Siddur of the Rasag, Rabbi Sa'ad Yagon, the Rambam also brings the Torah. In other words, this is, it's, 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 it's based very firmly on, um, on Jewish law. But the fact is, is it's a bit strange. And why do we take this? Other, there's others that don't do it that way. So why do we? Because the Rebbe is distressed the importance of customs. Eating matzah is a commandment from the Torah. Moro is a commandment from the rabbis. Leaning over. It says very clearly you have to do it in the, the Talmud in order to um, 
to show free, free in fact, if you don't lean over, when you, if you drink the wine and eat the matzah, you don't eat leaning over, there's sometimes you have to do it over again. There's sometimes, especially in the second cup, you have to do it over again, but um, you, technically, if you eat matzah, not leaning over, you have to do it again. Hari ani ben shivim shana. Okay, here we go. Next. I am 70 years old, said Rabbi Eliezer ben Azariah. It says, I am like 70 years old. The Gemara the Gemara says, as is Rabbi Eliezer ben Azariah, Rabbi Eliezer ben Azariah, he was really only, it was a lot younger. He was 18 years old. Nor ahadri le tamne sari dari. But all of a sudden there appeared on him 15, like, uh, 15 like lines of white hairs in his beard. And there at Bakuman, Achtzen Shuros, 18 uh, like lines, straight lines, whatever, in his hair, in his beard. As Hotter Oiskizen is there, he looked like an old man. Undas is the Diu Keben Shibushana. I am like 70 years old. Looked like he was 70 years old. Okay, what, what is this talking about? This is part of the Haggadah of Passover. And the Haggadah of Passover, we're talking about going out of Egypt and different wise men in the history of Judaism, what they had to say about going out of Egypt. And it brings down Rabbi Eliezer ben Azariah. Rabbi Eliezer ben Azariah, he said that I am like 70 years old and I did not merit to get my law across. I wanted to put a law across the way I understood something in the Torah. And nobody wanted to listen to me. Until this day, I became 70 years old. There was a whole long story that he had, had a big argument with another one. It was a big Torah argument. And he was appointed to be the head of the, the, uh, the Sanhedrin. He was appointed to be, they deposed the previous one, Rabbi Shimon Gamliel, whatever, they opposed, they deposed him, and they put Rabbi Eliezer ben Azariah in his place. But there was a bit of, they were, they were a bit uh, uh, hesitant to do so because he was a young man. He was only 18 years old. So God made a miracle, and there grew these strands of white hair, white, white lines in his beard, so he looked older. So he said, no, he's, he looks good. And he can be the head of the Sanhedrin. He's a tremendous genius, holy person. And he got his law across. What was the law that he wanted to get across? It says that you should uh, okay, so it says in order that you should serve God all the days of your life. Call you mechayecha. Right? Call you mechayecha. This includes the, the daytime. And when it says, Yamei Chayecha is daytime. Kol Yamei Chayecha is even in the nighttime. You should say Shema Yisrael, also in the nighttime. And he said, not only in the day and in the night, but also Yamei Chayecha, also Kol Yamei Chayecha, even not only in the day and the night, also in the days of the mid. Days of the Mashiach will always remember going out of Egypt. Going out of Egypt, even in the days of the Mashiach. Okay, what, what they're talking about is this third third paragraph of Shema. Should we say it in the, in the nighttime as well? And he said that you should say it. His argument was that you should say it in the days of the Mashiach also. Because it says, remember going out of Egypt. So you have to remember, okay, so what is the third paragraph of Shema Yisrael? It talks about tzitzis. It says that the thing about tzitzis, you should remember, tzitzis, 
and says, I am God that took you out of Egypt, right? I am God that took you out of Egypt. You should remember it. Take him out of so, so the reason that the, there was opposition because it talks about tzitzis and tzitzis is not, they aren't worn in the nighttime. So why should you say in the nighttime? So he said it should be said in the nighttime. And also in the days of the Mashiach, why will you say it? Not because of the tzitzis, because you remember going out of Egypt. You have to remember going out of Egypt even, which is also in that paragraph. You should remember going out of Egypt even in the days of the Mashiach. You'll have to be remembering going out of Egypt even in the days of the Mashiach. Okay, obvious question is, why should we remember God? I, I am God that took you out of Egypt. Why remember in the days of the Mashiach? I mean, that's going to be... incomparably greater than going out of Egypt. Why should we remember? So here, this is what we're going to say. In any case, that's not what we're dealing with now. We're dealing with this fact that he said he was like 70 years old. That's what we're dealing with. What the argument was and what it came out, this is also very interesting. It's also very relevant to the Haggadah because it's talking about going out of Egypt. And even in the days of the Mashiach, we'll have to remember going out of Egypt and the Rebbe made a whole, a whole new emphasis out of this. He said that you have to call Yemecha all of the days of your life, all of the days, all of your time, and all of your life has to breathe, be to bring to the days of the Mashiach. That's what you should be spending all of your time and all of your energy in, is trying to bring Mashiach. Okay, that's what the Rebbe said. But here, let's concentrate on something else over here. Another point. The point is... What do you mean? What did he mean? He's like 70 years old. What does that exactly mean? It's not understood. What it says later, I'm 70 years old and I did not merit to get my law across until now. Is there wonder? It's a wonder of a low zechiti. He said, I did not merit to get this law that across, that I wanted to get across, that you should say Shema Yisrael in the nighttime also. Nor oich mitzadem, not because he wasn't smart enough, but because he didn't look old enough. Or not a sacht sight, given, and a person who was older, he's devoted a lot of his time to certain things. So a person is older, so he devotes his time to this particular idea. So he has more weight to what he says when he's older. But the fact is, he wasn't older. He just looked older, and everybody knew it. Therefore, hater gedarf menatzeach zayin. Because if you would really have been older, so there's a reason to listen to older men because they have more experience. They know more because they listen. I once thought like you also, and it took me a few years, and I was sure of myself, just like you're sure of yourself. And age brought uh, the seasoning, I understand, and I was wrong. Therefore, the law is like me, because I'm older, I understand. But because that he wasn't really older, he just looked like he was older. As fault them up, so it, it's lacking the whole reason that you should listen to me, because I'm older. He wasn't older. Everybody knew that he wasn't older. He just looked older. Everyone respected him because of his tremendous wisdom that he had. And because they saw that God did this strange miracle with him that made his beard white so that he looked older. But in the fact of the matter, he was, he was not older. So why is he using that as a reason that his law should be listened to? You should listen to me. You should listen to me because I'm smarter. You should listen to me because I'm the, I'm the head of the, of the rabbis. Don't say you should listen to me because I am like 70 years old. Why does he say that? Listen to me. Because I am like 70 years old. That's what he was like 70 years old. He wasn't 70 years old. He just had a few white hairs. The white hairs made it. The, 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 you should say, listen to me, because there was a miracle done, and I look right older. What's going on? What does it mean that I am like 70 years old? No, it says Yidu, but it's known as the Meshali and the Dugmos Shebetorah Examples or parables or whatever that are given in the store in the Torah are not just arbitrary. Nor is it very nishtalshal from Zen Nimshal, but it comes from a very high source. 
Und das Gufa was in Nira Kazakh, the fact that he looked like he was older, is das Val, Baruchnis spiritually, it must be that really he was older. He was 70 years old. True, he didn't have the experience, but nevertheless, some or other, some spiritual, maybe he did have the experience. Let's see. 70 years old. When a Zoe like it says in the Siddur of the Arizal, of Kabbalistic Siddur prayer book of the Rav Yitzchak Luria. As Betzir of Zayn Yoren, with the Erster Gilgul, when you added up the years that he had, now, how old was he? He's 18 years old. And you add that up, some say he was 17 years old. In any case, if you add that up with his previous incarnation, is there Gavan Domel Shivim Shani, who was 70 years old? An incarnation, what's this? I mean, the fact is he was only 18 years old, so he had an incarnation. First of all, there's such things in Judaism, incarnations? Yes, there is, definitely is. There's even a whole book written by the Arizal, Sefer Gilgulim, who is the incarnation of who and who, because the soul comes into the world several times in order to, to get fixed up, and also to fix up what it's supposed to do in the world. Eventually, all the souls are going to come back into bodies, but they're going to come back into their own bodies. That's going to be the raising of the dead. What's going to be when one soul had been reincarnated into seven di several different bodies? Which body is going to stand up? So the Rebbe has a whole answer about that. We're not the first ones to think of these questions. Anyway, there's an answer. In any case, together with the, the reincarnation, the soul that came from his previous reincarnation, which we're going to see that his previous reincarnation, that was the prophet Samuel, Shmuel and Navi, we'll see. So by that, together that, he had the age and experience and wisdom of a 70-year-old man. Well, therefore, therefore, is Messiah and Bitmiya, and therefore he says, I did not merit that the law should be like me until today. Mitab them was Ruchnius is a governor Zakin because spiritually he was old, right? He was 18. All of a sudden he was given this the, the years of his previous life woke up as Hatar Gadar of Zion He should have merited that the law was like him. But just today he merited. When Durak Demba means that this was Zikna Baruchnes, because he was spiritually old in a good sense, wise, but they're forbunden with an Indian from Torah. Therefore, he joined this joint to the Torah. Suddenly, the law became like him. When these latent years of his previous incarnation were woken up, so suddenly the law became like him. Was Torah. Because the Torah rules over the physical. Okay. One minute, I'm having problems here. This was expressed as Taka Oiska comes, so it actually came out that he was really 70 years old. Can you hear me? Am I coming through? Yes? I don't know. It says that I'm getting all sorts of signs popping up. You were saying it's not working, it is working. Yes, good. Thank you very much. Thank you. Here we go. Let's go to the next page. One minute. So therefore, together with his previous incarnation, suddenly he became 70 years old. And because it was according, it, it even expressed itself in the Torah. I feel in Zion of Gansen what? Ois, this is a samachap. Ois, lecher inyanim. Even the most exter external things. This previous incarnation affected him that even his hair became white. 
he actually became like 70 years old. When Lloyd Dem Maimur Yerushalmi, like it says in the Yerushalmi, in the Talmud Yerushalmi, or even the Pesach, and it says, Lekel Gomelolai, Gomelolai, that God changes the world. As the Messias from Velt, the world, Vet Lloyd Dem Pesach Din from the Torah. That according to what the rabbis say, that's what the law becomes. Okay, what can we teach from this? What can we learn from this? The advising from them is, in a service of every item, every person, Rovan Shamos, almost all of the souls in our generation, they are not new souls. All of us are reincarnations of someone that lived before. <clears throat> Is Bishas Gilgul, it's called the reincarnation Gilgul. Is Bishas is Kumtsu, an Indian and a Voda, when it comes to something in service of God, which According to my powers, I haven't got in the Itzhaka Gilgo present in my present incarnation, what I am now. Zeter nit as er as ten and durchen. I have some sort of a challenge that I see that with my powers and my intellect and my experience, I can't stand. I can't go through this. It's too much. It's overpowering me. As dark for vision, you have to know. As this can by him, it could be revealed, they're told from a free Rikha Gilgul, that can be revealed inside of you from the good that you did in a previous incarnation. What does help, and this helps a person to serve God. Nit norm seichel and meet us not only in your intellect or emotions, inner powers, you have more inspiration, but even in the most physical things in the world, thought, speech, action, and yanim, Hachitzonim, the most external things in day-to-day life. I could, well, you can, a person could say, okay, good, uh, you know, what comes from the previous incarnation? Maybe in the previous incarnation, I was, ba- I was a bad person. Maybe I did all sorts of bad things. Maybe that's also going to come to haunt me and, and to, 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 to cripple me. Uh, to take away my... In plu, can men fragan, a person can ask, Oh, man is mitzvah. If you can add the, the previous uh, Gilgul, the previous incarnation, as Verdan and Plug, the Ra, also the bad things, also can join. And Gaben Mitzav and Friedrich Gilgul, I can inherit the previous thing. Maybe in the previous the, the, the incarnation, I was a thief and I was lazy and I was I had all sorts of negative traits. And from I did all sorts of sins and things. And from Vanen, Zalir Nemen, Kochos, now I'm really in trouble. Not only do I have my own problems, I have all the problems from the previous incarnation as well. Maybe it's better we shouldn't talk about these things. Says the Rebbe, don't worry about it. This idea of these incarnations, it's only positive. The answer in this is like this. Tov is a Metzius Nitzchi. Good is eternal. This is very powerful what the Rebbe is saying. When you do something good, it's eternal. B'Sha'a Sayyid, when a Jew, here he's talking about Jews, but really it refers to everyone. The Rebbe is, uh, Jews first, the Rebbe is the rabbi of the Jews. When a Jew does a commandment, this remains eternal. He's attached to the truth. The truth <clears throat> is eternal. Like it says in Natanya, this is when a person does something good, this is eternal, it's there forever. Chapter 25. Aber, but, <clears throat> ra, bad things? And Kaim and it's not, it's not really real. It says, Mir Nidvia Helen is just a concealment of what's good. So a person stuck all of his identity into his big house or his money or whatever, those things certainly are not going to last. It's just nothing. But if a person did something good, those good things are eternal. But Oi Berhat Shoin, Makuman, Onish, Namarek, and even if a person did do bad things, as that's what the whole idea of going to hell is for. It just cleans the person off and gets rid of the bad. He becomes 
shaves off all the imaginary things that he's devoted his stupid things he's devoted his life to. The gashma is to ruchnius, physical things, spiritual things. Or if them, what there is getan, whatever we did, we're going to hell. It purifies the person. Other as air hut af the ruif chuvakatan. It could also be that a person repented. If a person repents what he did, he said, I'm sorry, I didn't mean it. God, you know, I'm, I'm sorry I did bad things. So this does away with a good, I mean, of course, if a person killed people or whatever, so, it, 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 you know, his repentance is not going to bring the people back. But the, but the fact of the matter is, is it does do something to clean the soul. Is dach, God judges according to your deeds, right? God does not remain. We're talking about Jews and non-Jews. There's another thing about going to heaven. Heaven is a whole different thing, which I don't really understand what it is, to tell you the truth. And this is a reward for doing exactly what God wants according to the Torah. That's going to heaven. But it doesn't mean that a person will not be rewarded if he does good deeds. But then it's a little bit harder to figure out exactly how it goes. It's, I, I don't know exactly how it works out. Let's say a person is you know, a very, very devoted you know, Nazi. And he was tremendously self-sacrificing. And he killed and he murdered in the name of, you know, Germany or whatever he did. And he was a tremendously, you know, valiant and uh, soldier and self-sacrificing. And that's a, I mean, obviously, he's not going to get a reward for that. But on the other hand, if he fought against, so he does, but he did basically the same thing. So th- who's going to, I don't know how that works. Don't ask me. I don't understand how it works. But nevertheless, it does work. God does not remain um, a, 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 a debtor. A person that does good things, he gets rewarded for it. A person that does bad things is if he repents for it, he says, I'm sorry, I didn't mean it. So that mitigates his punishment. And how this is, there's big Kabbalists that know about this stuff. I don't know it. Okay. In any case, what we're talking about is not the bad stuff. Let's get off that subject. We're talking about the good. Any little bit of good that you did is eternal. <clears throat> is the Havana so certainly that bad goes away? Right? Whether it goes away because the person repented or because the person gets whatever is cleaned off in hell and purgatory or whatever. But nevertheless, it's only temporary and it goes away. The whole idea is good. Okay, so what it means that inside of us is this hidden good. What does is, and for this is the answer, and those who ask a question, we can design. How can it be that in the previous generations that we did not merit to the Mashiach? And now in our generation, Echshar Dore beat me up. This now our generation is a generation of Mashiach. And come, come on, you know how low we are. As Vetmen Zochen, Zochen, now we're going to merit to the Mashiach. How can that possibly be? The previous generation, they were so great. The Tanayim, the Amoroim, said they had the power to raise the dead. What do we, we can't even raise ourselves out of bed in the morning. What are we going to, we're going to, we're going to merit to the Mashiach? Says the answer is, I have them as in Itzikador, in our generation, is a how do you say a, 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 a conglomeration of all of the good that was in all the previous generations? Is the oich der tov? Is the, also the good from all the previous generations, like we said before? Therefore, we can now specifically merit to the coming of the Mashiach because we all the good that was done in all the generations, all the suffering the Jews that suffered, and nevertheless they continued believing in God. And doing his commandments under impossible situations, that good is eternal. And we have the merit of that good now. Therefore, all we have to do is a little bit more, and that'll tilt the scales and bring Mashiach Bimhera Biamenu. Okay, my friends, thank you very much for coming. God bless you. Tomorrow will be Friday, and we will have a class at 8 15 in the morning, uh, from 8 15 until 9 o'clock. Have a good day with Mashiach now. Shalom Urachah.